Now in its 17th year, the Campus Safety Director of the Year program recognizes K-12 higher ed and hospital police chiefs, security directors, emergency managers, or heads of security and public safety who demonstrate outstanding leadership skills, ingenuity, and selflessness. We name the winner for each sector at our Campus Safety Conference. The nomination materials we receive are full of impressive accomplishments and collaborations. We briefly outlined these achievements on our website, but wanted to further honor the nominees and their hard work by conducting interviews where they can elaborate on some of those successes. In these interviews, finals share some of their challenges and subsequent solutions they've implemented. We hope campuses that may be considering similar endeavors find value and guidance in these discussions. Hi everyone, I'm here today with Lou Alexis, Director of Emergency Management for Orange County Public Schools in Florida and also a 2024 Campus Safety Director of the Year finalist. And looking over the submission materials for your nomination, Lou, one unique initiative that your district has is preparedness days. Can you give a general overview of this event, what it consists of and who was involved? Absolutely. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, well, Preparedness Day started out with uh, a gift that we actually received from um, one of our hospital partners, Orlando Health, and they provided some tourniquets, uh, Stop the Bleed kits, and um, we had all these uh, Stop the Bleed kits, then the mission was, well, how do we get all our principals together over the summer to actually train them? Um, so we worked it out. We were able to get the principals over the course of two, actually three days. Uh, we were able to get them to come out and Orlando Health provided the training. So the result of that was we also invited district departments to kind of like just, you know, table and provide information because, you know, principals, they're out at running schools all the time. They speak to folks in the district. And they're not really they they've never met, so it was an opportunity opportunity to put to put faces to names. So um, it worked out well. We got some feedback. Then we had the ideas like, hey, you know what? Why don't we do this every year and offer classes? So we have some classes that's required uh, for principals to take during the uh, uh, school year. It's like, why don't we offer that during the summer so they can have the opportunity to take it, get it over with. They're, they're trained, ready to go, provide resources and for them to get ready to go for the school uh, the school year. So we're able to do that. Um, and it's really something that cascaded to providing a, a small training to the semi-conference style event to where today we provide uh, training from uh, uh, human trafficking to internet safety to mental health. So we bring in uh, partners, public partners, and uh, to offer various uh, training in addition to our standard uh, training on active assailant bomb threats and, and things like that. And uh, we also provide opportunities for sponsors to come and sponsor the event, table the event, uh, a lot of sponsors that deal with schools, whether you, they provide uniforms or school supplies and things like that. So it's a lot of uh, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, we do involve a lot of our stakeholders, public safety, uh, health department, local emergency management agencies. They're all involved. We invite them to come in and, and, and train uh, with our principals. And I, it started with the uh, hospital partnership. Are they involved in these preparedness days still? Yeah, uh, actually, as a matter of fact, um, this year, uh, for preparedness days this year, day two is going to be a reunification, a full-scale reunification exercise. Um, so one of the classes that they're offering is really reunification from a hospital perspective. So, for example, if an incident happened, you have folks that are injured or you have casualties, you have people rushing to the hospital to find loved ones. So what does that look like? What's that process and how we can work together to help them identify, you know, kids and kids, the parents that are visiting the hospital are actually the parents of that child or that the individual that was impacted. So we have that partnership and they're gonna be talking to our school administrators about from their perspective, what unif reunification looks like and how we can work together to make sure, you know, the process runs a lot smoother. Yeah, we've seen, especially lately in some school tragedies, just parents descend 
upon it. So having mm-hmm. some sort of organized chaos, I mean, it's still going to be chaotic and it needs mm-hmm. to get like that, but having communication is so important. And I think now, especially since Uvalde and how much they fumbled that, parents are more apt to run to a school and there's an absolutely if they, if, even if it's not something as severe as an active shooter so you know, absolutely mm-hmm. and now I, I read that one of the focuses of these conference conferences is to give administrators like you said an opportunity to engage with the safety and emergency management team are, are there other interactions between these two groups throughout the year you know, to ensure continuity and emergency planning? And, and if so, what do those interactions look like? Sure, absolutely. So the way we structure is we have five emergency preparedness administrators, and their job is really to be out in the field, engage with the principals all the time. So they're actively engaged visiting schools. As a matter of fact, four days a week, that's what they're out doing, visiting schools, uh, doing checks, uh, assisting principals with training. Uh, we monitor uh, this le- the legislative session uh, to make sure any laws or any new requirements for either for drills or anything that may require us to develop a new training, that we, we stay on top of that. And we develop those trainings and we go out there and execute the training. So our, our my staff, they're at the schools uh, constantly uh, assisting with anything from uh, helping them assess uh, safety features at the schools, um, pushing to get maintenance issues resolved, uh, uh, helping them lead some of their trainings, whether that's uh, active shooter training, bomb threat training, reunification training, what have you, uh, evaluate those training, provide f- provide feedback, and provide uh, uh, feedback on um, anything from arrival and dismissals. Um, we address that as well. Um, severe weather We're in Florida, lightning's a, a big issue for us. So uh, training principles on the lightning detection softwares that we have and, you know, and what the processes are uh, to execute uh, our emergency response capabilities. So it's it's continuous uh, support. We see it as a partnership and the principals, they, they really feel uh, that they have support from the district by extension of having those folks out there interacting and, 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 and engaging with them. They all, part of their responsibilities also is to help with assessment. Like they'll go to a school, make sure like they check for locked doors as well, make sure doors are locked. Make sure, you know, doors are not propped open and, and things like that. So there's always continuous engagement year round with, with our school administrators. So you said you have five of those roles? Mm-hmm. Just That's correct. Different. How big is your district? Our district, we're the fourth largest in the state of Florida and eighth in the country. So we have over 200 schools over 220,000 uh, students. So each of our uh, emergency preparedness are assigned a set of schools. Uh, for example, we have one that's over high school and then two of them that splits uh, middle school and the others, they split the elementary schools. And that's in addition to our tech colleges because we have we have five campuses. And um, one of the things actually we're, we're expanding on, we're developing a program for administrative sites. So that's going to be an addition. So we got to look at our administrative sites, uh, have them do drills and have them, you know, make sure they're able to respond in an emergency as well. So that's one of the areas that we're expanding and that's going to add to their portfolio of responsibilities. The program offerings differ slightly year to year based on current events impacting schools or, you know, legislation in any given year. I know Florida has passed some legislation recently with uh, Alyssa's law, for example. Oh, absolutely. Because again, legislation is big because we monitor that the legislative session just wrapped up because that's going to really uh, dictate a lot of our posture, our posture moving into the next school year. Additionally, we look at what happened uh, na- nationwide, any uh, incidents that happen, any lessons learned, or we, you know, we try to be proactive, stay ahead of the curve. Not only that, we look at uh, social and economical issues as well. One of the programs we looked at was uh, where we looked at creating was something to educate students on preparedness and safety, internet safety. So we 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 created a bounce program that gears toward 
educating young kids on preparedness issues, uh, you name it, from uh, internet safety to, uh, you know, walking home to uh, summer safety, you name it, anything about safety is throughout for students. We created that throughout our, our bounce program. But anything um, that's happening, whether it's at a school district or not, especially when it comes to things with active assailant, uh, reunification, bomb threats, things like that, we look for ways to improve our training. We look for ways to bring in subject matter experts to not only um, train with us, but review our trainings and processes and provide us feedback. So every year during the summer, it's a busy time for us. As soon as the legislative session ends, we have preparedness days. And it's also the time when we look at our suite of trainings and, and uh, make changes and updates um, prior to the start of the school year. And you mentioned involving the kids. I think kids really appreciate being involved in the process of school safety. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Absolutely. Like uh, before, sorry, before um, Parkland, no one really asked students what they thought or how they mm -hmm. felt about school safety and, and what was important to them. And now I think they're just being involved in the conversation so much more. Right. And part the way we came up with that whole bounce program concept was a survey. Because one of the things we thought is like, well, why don't we serve the end users, right? We we do all these drills. We do all these things that the kids are required to do. Why don't we survey them and see how they f actually feel about it? Is it useful or even get their recommendation? And Lord and Beo, we were very surprised when you asked them and some of them, there's drill fatigue. They don't take it serious. And so then we, that's information that we can use to say, okay, what what can we do? to make them take the drill serious what can we do to improve because they're they're going through it they're they're going through the motion so having their input on um seeing how they're receiving the drills when we tell them, hey a bomb threat this is what's going to happen for a severe weather drill this is what you're doing and here's why why it's important that you follow these directions why it's important that we need you to listen to your teachers and administrators it it, it adds value to um what we're doing and and you know it adds a uh it makes i think it in in a way probably gives them a little bit of ownership in 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 uh what we're doing and now you mentioned to me in an email exchange before this chat that you've had several districts come view you, you conduct these preparedness days can you speak to this a little bit more maybe about the benefits of folks the visiting districts in your district and you know, have any of the districts adopted the programs, anything like that? Sure, absolutely. So when we started preparedness days, we didn't envision that it would be what it is today. Um, it really, um, the last couple of years have been exciting. Um, it started with uh, us posting on social media on LinkedIn where staff would post about preparedness days and then uh, we started speaking at the uh, conferences and you know just talk about our overall program e emergency management and how we execute that in the k-12 space and there's been a lot of interest and we talk about preparedness days and lord and behold people there were interested like hey can we come and, and and see what this is all about how do you get all these principles to actually show up on a volunteer basis because it's not we don't require them to attend but we have over 80 percent participation from our principals which is <laughs> amazing it really is for some for, to offer something voluntary where they come two days over the summer for them to come and take this training to take the training and you know the be part of the exercises i mean it, it it's an it's an amazing uh accomplishment but again a lot of the uh the schools what we have had is we've had school districts inquire i've had requests to present to uh school administration about the preparedness days uh, i've had emails and calls to participate on conference call to explain how the program came to be um so some of the schools uh that have participated we've had some from uh, last year we had a uh, school district from kentucky and alabama came and spent uh, time with us to see what preparedness days was all about and how they're going to push they asked for questions about funding structure and so forth but again the challenge with putting something like that together is uh leadership buy-in 
because you have to first sell it to your prince, uh, your superintendent or the the in, individual cabinet member, whoever runs the school district to see if that's something they would even support. So for us, the way it worked out, we took advantage of a donation that was given to us and we saw that as an opportunity. We took advantage of that and it worked out well for us. But, you know, to uh, start something like that from scratch, I think what, what I always tell them is like for them, they would have to come in experience preparedness days. I say have them come, if they're are we extend an invitation, have them come and experience it for themselves. And they can see if there's something, if there's value in it. That's the best way I can tell it to sell the program is to come participate, see how it's done. And then you see, hey, is this something that would be of value to your district? Uh, is this something that we can use? It, or maybe a modified version of it doesn't have to be to the extent uh, of what we're doing because it didn't start out that way. One of the things I would say, start small. It doesn't have to be some elaborate thing. If they're giving you one day or half a day, take half a day. If you can bring as many people together as possible, you start that way. Hey, you start out a half a day program where you have different speakers or or you, it's just internal. And then you build up on that, get the feedback and try to, you know, build up on uh, that way. That's that's one avenue to go about doing it.